although are two articles covering the fact that, since the Act of 1871 which established the District of Columbia, we have been living under the United States Corporation, which is owned by certain international bankers and aristocracy of Europe and Britain. In 1871 the Congress changed the name of the original Constitution, by changing one word and that was very significant as you will read. Some people do not understand that one word or two words difference in any legal document do make the critical difference. But, Congress has known, and does know, this. I am told this corporation, established in 1871, will be cancelled by NESARA and NESARA will also restore the original Constitution, which assists in restoring our constitutional rights and the Bill of Rights and our rights, as described in the Declaration of Independence. 1871, February 21st Congress passes an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, also known as the Act of 1871 with no constitutional authority to do so. Congress creates a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, a 10-mile square parcel of land C. Acts of the 41st Congress, Section 34, Session 3, Chapters 61 and 62. The act passed when the country was weakened, and financial aid depleted in the aftermath of the Civil War was a strategic move by foreign interests international bankers, who were intended upon gaining a stranglehold on the coffers and neck of America. Congress cut a deal with the international bankers specifically Rothschilds of London, to incur a debt to said bankers. Because the bankers were not about to lend money to a floundering nation without serious stipulations, they devised a way to get their foot in the door of the United States. The Act of 1871 formed a corporation called the United States. The corporation, owned by foreign interests, moved in and shoved the original constitution into a dustbin. With the Act of 1871, the organic constitution was defaced in effect vandalized and sabotaged when the title was capitalized and the word for was changed to of in the title. Info from yet unpublished book, Pentimento, Freedom Revisited. As you will see when reading, just as much of my knowledge of the trading with the enemy act came from Gene Schroeder, et al. This, too, came from elsewhere from Lisa Guilian of Babel magazine, whom I first met by way of an article by Patrick Bellringer. So, we cooperate as we study and learn the truth. C.E. The Constitution of the United States of America is the Constitution of the Incorporated United States of America. It operates in an economic capacity, and has been used to fool the people into thinking it governs the Republic. It does is not. Capitalization is not insignificant when one is referring to a legal document. This seemingly minor alteration has had a major impact on every subsequent generation of Americans. What Congress did by passing the Act of 1871 was create an entirely new document, a constitution for the government of the District of Columbia, an incorporated government. This newly altered constitution was not intended to benefit the Republic. It benefits only the Corporation of the United States of America, and operates entirely outside the original organic constitution. Instead of having absolute and unalienable rights guaranteed under the organic constitution, we the people now have relative rights or privileges. One example is the sovereign's right to travel, which has now been transformed under corporate government policy into a privilege that requires citizens to be licensed. By passing the Act of 1871, Congress committed treason against the people who were sovereign under their grants and decrees of the Declaration of Independence and the Organic Constitution. Information courtesy of Lisa Goliani, HTTP, www.babelmagazine.com. The Act of 1871 became the foundation of all the treason, since committed by government officials. The United States isn't a country, it's a corporation. In preparation for stealing America, the puppets of Britain's banking cabal had already created a second government, a shadow government designed to manage what the common herd believed was a democracy, but what really was an incorporated United States. Together this chimera, this two-headed monster, disallowed the common herd all rights of sui juris. Sovereignty Congress, with no authority to do so, created a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, a 10-mile square parcel of land. 
Why and how did they do so? First, Lisa Galliani of Babel magazine reminds us that the Civil War was, in fact, little more than a calculated front with fancy footwork by backroom players. Then she adds, it was also a strategic maneuver by British and European interests international bankers intent on gaining a stranglehold on the coffers of America. And, because Congress knew our country was in dire financial straits, certain members of Congress cut a deal with the international bankers in those days, the Rothschilds of London were dipping their fingers into everyone's pie. There you have the why, why members of Congress permitted the international bankers to gain further control of America. Then, by passing the Act of 1871, Congress formed the corporation known as the United States. This corporation, owned by foreign interests, shoved the organic version of the Constitution aside by changing the word for to of in the title. Let me explain. The original Constitution drafted by the Founding Fathers read, the Constitution for the United States of America note, that neither the words United nor States begin with capital letters but the Constitution of the United States of America is a corporate constitution, which is absolutely not the same document you think it is. First of all, it ended all our rights of sovereignty sui juris. So you now have the how, how the international bankers got their hands on the United States of America. To fully understand how our rights of sovereignty were ended, you must know the full meaning of sovereign, sovereign chief or highest, supreme power, superior in position to all others, independent of and unlimited by others, possessing or entitled to, original and independent authority or jurisdiction. Webster in short, our government, which was created by and for us, as sovereigns free citizens deemed to have the highest authority in the land was stolen from us, along with our rights. Keep in mind that, according to the original constitution, only we the people are sovereign. Government is not sovereign. The Declaration of Independence says, government is subject to the consent of the governed. That's us the sovereigns. When did you last feel like a sovereign? As Lisa Galliani explained, it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a constitutional historian to figure out that the U.S. government has not been subject to the consent of the governed since long before you or I were born. Rather, the governed are subject to the whim and greed of the corporation, which has stretched its tentacles beyond the 10-mile square parcel of land known as the District of Columbia. In fact, it has invaded every state of the Republic. Mind you, the corporation has no jurisdiction beyond the District of Columbia. You just think it does. You see, you are presumed to know the law, which is very weird since we the people are taught nothing about the law in school. We memorize obscure facts and phrases here and there, like the preamble, which says, we the people establish this constitution for the United States of America but our teachers only gloss over the Bill of Rights. Our schools controlled by the corporate government don't delve into the constitution at depth. After all, the corporation was established to indoctrinate and dumb down the masses, not to teach anything of value or importance. Certainly, no one mentioned that America was sold out to foreign interests, that we were beneficiaries of the debt incurred by Congress, or that we were in debt to the international bankers. Yet, for generations, Americans have had the bulk of their earnings confiscated to pay a massive debt that they did not incur. There's an endless stream of things the people are told. And, now that you are being told, how do you feel about being made the recipient of a debt without your knowledge or consent? After passage of the Act of 1871, Congress set a series of subtle and overt deceptions into motion, deceptions in the form of decisions that were meant to sell us down the river. Over time, the Republic took it on the chin until it was knocked down and counted out by a technical co-knockout. With the surrender of the people's gold in 1933, the common herd was handed over to illegitimate law. I'll bet you weren't taught that in school. Our corporate form of governance is based on Roman civil law and admiralty, or maritime, law, which is also known as the divine right of kings and the law of the seas another fact of American history not taught in our schools. Actually, Roman civil law was fully established in the colonies before our nation began, and then became managed by private international law. 
In other words, the government the government created for the District of Columbia via the Act of 1871 operates solely under private international law, not common law, which was the foundation of our constitutional republic. This fact has impacted all Americans in concrete ways. For instance, although private international law is technically only applicable within the District of Columbia, and not in the other states of the Union, the arms of the Corporation of the United States are called departments i.e., the Justice Department, the Treasury Department. And those departments affect everyone, no matter where in what state they live. Guess what? Each department belongs to the Corporation to the United States. Refer to any United States Code USC. Note the capitalization, this is evidence of a corporation, not a republic. For example, in Title 28, 3002, 15 ABC, it is unequivocally stated that the United States is a corporation. Translation, the corporation is not a separate and distinct entity, it is not disconnected from the government, it is the government true government. This is extremely important. I refer to it as the corporate empire of the United States, which operates under Roman civil law outside the original constitution. How do you like being ruled by a corporation? You say you ask your congressperson about this? Hall Congress is fully aware of this deception. So it's time that you, too, become aware of the deception. What this great deception means is that the members of Congress do not work for us, for you and me. They work for the corporation, for the United States. No wonder we can't get them to do anything on our behalf, or meet our demands, or answer our questions. Technically, legally, or any other way you want to look at the matter, the corporate government of the United States has no jurisdiction or authority in any state of the Union the Republic beyond the District of Columbia. Let the tidbit sink in, then ask yourself, could this deception have occurred without full knowledge and complicity of the Congress? Do you think it happened by accident? If you do, you're deceiving yourself. There are no accidents, no coincidences. Face the facts and confront the truth. Remember, you are presumed to know the law. They know you don't know the law or, for that matter, your history. Why? Because no concerted effort was ever made to teach or otherwise inform you. As a sovereign, you are entitled to full disclosure of all facts. As a slave, you are entitled to nothing other than what the corporation decides to give you. Remember also that ignorance of the law is no excuse it's your responsibility and obligation to learn the law, and know how it applies to you. No wonder the corporation counted on the fact that most people are too indifferent, unconcerned, distracted, or lazy to learn what they need to know to survive within the system. We have been conditioned to let the government do our thinking for us. Now's the time to turn that around, if we intend to help save our republic and ourselves before it's too late. As an instrument of the international bankers, the United States owns you from birth to death. It also holds ownership of all your assets, of your property, even of your children. Think long and hard about all the bills, taxes, fines, and licenses you have paid for or purchased. Yes, they had you by the pockets. If you don't believe it, read the 14th Amendment. See how free you really are. Ignorance of the facts led to your silence. Silence is construed as consent, consent to be beneficiaries of a debt you did not incur. As a sovereign people we have been deceived for hundreds of years, we think we are free, but in truth we are servants of the corporation. Congress committed treason against the people in 1871. Honest men could have corrected the fraud and treason. But apparently there weren't enough honest men to counteract the lust for money and power. We lost more freedom than we will ever know, thanks to corporate infiltration of our so-called government. Do you think that any soldier who died in any of our many wars would have fought if he or she had known the truth? Do you think one person would have laid down as her life for a corporation? How long will we remain silent? How long will we perpetuate the myth that we are free? When will we stand together as one sovereign people? When will we take back what has been as stolen from the us? If the people of America had known to what extent their trust was betrayed, how long would it have taken for a real revolution to occur? What we now need is a revolution in thought. 
we need to change our thinking, then we can change our world. Our children deserve their rightful legacy, the liberty our ancestors fought to preserve, the legacy of a sovereign and fully free people. Posted 8, 27, 02, HTTP, www.babalmagazine.com from a speech in Congress in the bankruptcy of the United States, United States Congressional Record, March 17, 1993. 33. Page H1303. Speaker Rep. James Traficant, Jr. Ohio addressing the House, prior to 1913, most Americans own clear, a lodial title to property, free and clear of any liens or mortgages until the Federal Reserve Act 1913 hypothecated all property within the Federal United States to the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve, in which the trustees stockholders held legal title. The U.S. citizen tenant, franchisee was registered as a beneficiary of the trust via his her birth certificate. In 1933, the federal United States hypothecated all of the present and future properties, assets and labor of their subjects, the 14th Amendment U.S. citizen, to the Federal Reserve System. In return, the Federal Reserve System agreed to extend the Federal United States Corporation emphasis added all the credit money substituted needed. Like any other debtor, the federal United States government had to assign collateral and security to their creditors, as a condition of the loan. Since the federal United States didn't have any assets, they assigned the private property of their economic slaves, the U.S. citizens as collateral against the unpayable federal debt. They also pledged the unincorporated federal territories, national parks forests, birth certificates, and non-profit organizations as collateral against the federal debt. All has already been transferred as payment to the international bankers. Unwittingly, America has returned to its pre-American revolution, feudal roots whereby all land is held by a sovereign, and the common people had no rights to hold a lodial title to property. Once again, we the people are the tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of the Federal Reserve Bank. We the people have exchanged one master for another, 